Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State allegedly arrests and touches June 12 protesters. And Afeni Fere, Pandef, the Christian Association of Nigeria and others ruffle feathers over President Buhari's Democracy Day speech. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anakon. Cross River State Government has been accused of arresting and torturing protesters who came out to protest on Saturday, June 12, the nation's Democracy Day. The protesters were demanding improved governance, carried placards and inscriptions such as Ayade paid pay old salaries and pensions, Ayade change your style of governance, amongst others. Now, previously, the Cross River State Government had warned against Democracy Day processions in the state on June 12, saying the ban on processions in the state has not been lifted. Well, joining us to discuss this is James Ibo. He is a legal practitioner and Alfred Mboto. He's the Permanent Secretary, Special Services, Governor's Office, Cross River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Ibor. You are one of the people who complained about the alleged um, uh, torturing and arrest by uh, government house uh, operatives. And the first question that comes to mind is, um, where was the police in all of this? And how come government house operatives were the ones who allegedly kidnapped protesters or rather arrested protesters? Okay. What actually happened was that uh, my client was arrested on the 11th day of uh, June 2021. And um, the argument we had with the, uh, because he was mobilizing for the protest on the 12th. Who's your client? So while Abba Jalingo. Okay. Abba Jalingo is a publisher of Cross River Watch. He was, uh, he, was, uh, he was invited by the police on the 11th. And there was detained for about three hours. And the outcome of um, his detention was that we had an agreement with the police commissioner on the nature of our protest. Uh, the proposed protest, which was the reason why Alpha Jalingo was invited and later detained for about three hours. We had an agreement with the commissioner of police that we are going to change the venue of our meeting to the premises of Cross River Watch, which is Abab Jalingo's premises. Mm -hmm. uh, that is for the for our meeting and celebration so, of June so, so you're telling me that you did not protest, but that you rather... Um... We, protested, we protested, but we followed strictly the guidelines and the advice of the commissioner of police. Okay. For instance, our protest was supposed to start at the Freedom Park on the 9th, uh, uh, by 9 a.m. But the commissioner of police advised that our our protest and demonstration should rather take place in the premises of Cross River Watch. And instead of 9, it should be 10 o'clock to give his uh, officers the time to mobilize and give us the necessary protection. So we refused to gather until it was 10. When we confirmed from the police public relations officer and other police officers that whose numbers were given to us to contact, that they were on ground. We gathered at about 10 o'clock and um, in the presence of the state security service and the national police, we started our meeting, we started singing and dancing within the premises of Cross River Watch as agreed. And so then, just at the point we were about to take attendance, we have even rounded up, we noticed the convoy of the governor. And they did a round turn, 
three times, uh, twice, and the third time they stopped in front of the office and ordered us to run. We, see, we saw no reason why we should be running when they were poking their guns and pointing at us. So we decided to rather stop the walk. They came and bundled us into their vehicles, shoved the police officers who were trying to talk to them that there had been no crisis. They've been sorry, sorry. Hold, hold on, hold on. Did you say they flogged police officers? Is that what you said? Hello, you know what? Did you say that they flogged police officers? They shoved police oh, they officers shoved violently. Them. Okay, I wanted to be certain. They, they shoved police officers violently. And remember, they had no name tag, they, and their faces were covered. Hmm. They bundled us into their, their truck, got us thoroughly beaten, they poured pepper spray, and, and um, also blindfolded us. So um, what, 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 to, when you were blind, blindfolded, um, where do you think you were taken to? Because obviously you wouldn't know where you were going to, but where do you think you were uh, taken to? Yeah, they, they actually, I think they actually drove us around town. Remember they have um, pictures of our clothes. We are bare body. They use our clothes to, to tie our feet. Interesting. I, I'm just going to, uh, because we're having a connection issues with you, I'm going to go to... Um, Mr. Mboto. Uh, Mr. Mboto, you are obviously in charge of sudden security issues and you render special services on behalf of the governor's office in Cross River State. I know I have spoken with you uh, before on issues of insecurity in the state. Um, can you help us uh, understand exactly what happened on June 12 uh, and the claims that are being made by Mr. Ebo? Well, honestly speaking, I'm very, su very, very surprised because I know that. Um, before even this time, I had uh, been on air, um, reminding the police, every other security agency had been on air, reminding every cross civilian that um, they, they ban on um, protest. And um, um, are you hearing me? Yes, I oh, can yeah, hear you. getting me? That they ban on protest and um, uh, large crowd gatherings were still in force in cross River State. And and uh, that um, and no, the government has not prevented any person from doing his normal business. But the government, but the speaking, government did I, put out a statement. I remember seeing it on the day before June 12 that there was a ban. It was a ban on any yes. protest. Does the yes. government or the governor of Cross River State understand that protests are supposedly rights of every single Nigerian under the constitution? Yeah. And that, does he understand yeah, yeah. that he doesn't have a right to ban protests, but he can only ask people to not come out, but then he cannot ban protests? I'm, I'm just trying to understand if you all, uh, under that administration, understand what the yeah, Constitution yeah. says about it. The, the, ba the, ba the, the, yeah, the, the ban the ban on, on protest had to do because of the experiences we had during the NSAS when a protest was given approval to hold, and within that, that shortest period of time, it was hijacked and the destruction level was high. And so for any other person trying to make any protest here, in order to get approval and, uh, from the security agency, which is the police. And so that, that was guided on that, that the government is very, very interested in making sure that the citizens are protected and what happened in NSAS does not repeat in Kassiva State that was given. And are we together? Hello? I'm listening. Yes. So that was given because of the experiences we had during the NSAS, which we gave every uh, police protection was there. And the, the, the whole laws came in and objected, hijacked it. And it was said that, that that we had to reiterate that if anybody wants to make any occasion, whatever he wants to do, he has to get the approval of the, the commissioner of police. And truly speaking, throughout that day, we have been on surveillance, we went around the whole town. I am very surprised. I'm just hearing it from what he's saying here. Because I didn't see any. Like I, I, I did told you, I never saw any protests in Calabar. I never saw any protests in the whole state. Of all those, uh, the all the items that we went around to go around and making sure that 
whoever that was moving, there was protection because I know the markets were full. Every place was normal. It was normal business took place in Calabar. I never so you're knew, telling I never me heard, that I, you're I'm telling me that you had no knowledge that these people were protesting, no. or that there were a group of people but who were pro protesting in front of Cross River Watch's premises, or that I'm not your aware people who were on surveillance. Um, never uh, had any so you're telling me that, that with all of the surveillance you did you did not pass through the streets where there was cross river state watch and you didn't see any I, humans I, with placards because i saw that video on social media and i was wondering why they were standing on the side of a street to protest but i didn't realize until now so you're telling me you didn't yes, see sir. these people and that their claims are false yeah, I'm, 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 I'm telling you the gospel truth that uh, my surveillance, the surveillance covered everywhere across the state, and in every two minutes there have been reports of what is happening here, what is happening. John, like he rightly said, when he said that the, the, the day before that um, his uh, when a client was invited, I was very uh, happy. He said he changed the word because before now he said he was arrested, before he now said he was invited for uh, the dialogue with uh, the police and that and that. So I, I never. I, we had a very wide and robust connection of uh, um, um, surveillance. So at any time in point, nothing happens in the state that I, I, I don't get. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm just, I'm just going to ask you one more question and go back to James so that he can corroborate the story. But I've asked you, and you're telling me that you didn't see anything. So why would Mr. James Ebor and his client and every other person who was arrested try to give the governor of your state a bad name? Explain to me, please. I wouldn't know. Truly, truly speaking, I wouldn't know. That may be personal to, uh, to whatever, because truly speaking, they, it, it, you can come into street uh, interview, go around. you see that nobody in Calabar, let me use Calabar as an example, nobody in Calabar, uh, nobody in the state said there was any protest in, in, in Kosovo. I never saw. And all the, all my, all the, the people that were deployed for surveillance to making sure because actually before even that day, we had intelligence that there were planned um, attacks on the state. Remembering that this is the only state within uh, the south, uh, the south, south there with those who are boarding or that were yeah, that, that have not been attacked by what was happening in other areas. And so okay. we needed to make sure we put everything in place where those who love don't have access to come in to bring the havoc that they did during the answer. All right, back to so you, we, Mr. There Ebo. There was enough surveillance. Okay. I, I, at least, at least. By now, if not them, would I even heard it from the police too. Okay. I've not heard anything. Let's bring Mr. James Ebo no back in, into the conversation. Mr. James Ebo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Great. Um, so you have heard um, Mr. Mboto. He's saying that there was no protest. His men were out on surveillance. This is the first time he's hearing of this story. It sounds to him more like cock and boo. So again, where on planet Earth were your people protesting? Uh, because I did see a video, but of course, um, we do not have access to that video to be able to tell if it's real or not. But where were your people? Who arrested you? And I, I remember yeah. that part of your conversation yeah. was that you were rescued by the state commissioner of police. Explain to us where exactly you were and how the Commissioner of Police got into this conversation. <laughs> exactly. You know, it, it's actually strange. Uh, it shows that the State Security Advisor uh, is incompetent because the, the SSS took videos of us, the Police Commissioner, the Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of operations took videos of us, and um, the DPO, Divisional Police Officer in charge of Akim, the area we were protesting within the premises of Crossover Watch also was with us. In fact, she was pushed violently. Almost, she almost fell into the gutter when the convoy of the governor arrived. So it's either the state security advisor is dishonest or he's very ignorant about the security situation of Crossover State. Yes, there was no post, um, um, uh, protest in public, but within the premises of Crossover Watch. In fact, we were not only blindfolded or beaten, they planted life ammunition or not. Maybe they had other plans. Maybe they had other plans. And be undergoing treatment as I speak to you now. It is shameful because if you go around town, people, individuals were, were videoing. And for the state police, uh, for the state um, um, uh, 
security advisor to see nothing happened, he's not aware of anything, it's strange. We were, we were driven around town, bare body, with our faces blindfolded. Before letter we were taken to the state police headquarters and we were handed over to Operation Fourth Adam. They went, they went ahead to search our premises and they released us unconditionally. When they found that the, 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 the allegation that we were causing, we were protesting on the street and causing a um, uh, problem, the police discovered that it was false. The people who arrested us were the kind of, the convoy they came with was the, the, the convoy that is similar to the one that escorts the governor with motorbikes, close to about 10 motorbikes. Hmm. Interesting. Um, now that you have, um, like you said, you are receiving treatment um, because um, the messages you sent, you also talked about the fact that some of you um, the, ingested some substances that you do not know and you're still trying to uh, yes, get better. I was, we were splitted with uh, uh, peppery substances. Even when I told them I, I need an inhaler, that I'm asthmatic, they were splitting it in my nose. They, they attempted to kill me. It's an attempted murder. So I'm going to ask you the same question I asked. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Mr. Mboto. Um, why would the government want to kill or harm your members if the police had given you, according to the government, you had to get permission from the police or inform the police? Well, that, uh, if you have what, done all of this, why would the government be after you? What exactly would they be gaining from um, harming you? Or maybe the weapons yes, that were planted let, let on you? Akba Jalin, Akba, Jalingo, Akba Jalin is already an enemy of state. The state has declared him a, a, an enemy. He's executed in different courts in state. So it was not surprising that even when we try to maintain the peace, they will want to do something to frustrate peaceful demonstration. They, I, I think he was a primary target, and because the state, the state governor has personally declared him a personal non grata and they would not like to see him discussing anything that 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 is to, to, to sensitize the public about the maladministration, the corruption in the system. Okay. Finally, Mr. Mboto, before we go, um, would you like to respond to what he has said? He's made claims that uh, the uh, government is afraid um, of any speech, uh, anybody that would I, want to attack I, I, it uh, in terms of the alleged corruption, malhandling of government, etc. Um, in your, in, in, in your assessment, <laughs> do you think that the state is safe under Governor Ayadi? And um, these allegations that are being made, do you think they're baseless or not? I think those are personal perceptions, but I think it is not correct. As far as the security is concerned, uh, the governor has put in a very strong security structure that I, and, and even what is even baffling me now is that uh, the police are there, as he I, I rightly said. If the police came and saw that some person was manhandling some other person, what is the police supposed to do? So to tell you that that it is not it is not as he's saying. Uh, I think it is personal uh, whatever perception is having. Yeah, I but, don't think that... But you haven't answered my it. question, sir, so I'm going to ask it again. From your assessment, the special duties um, under the governor, how safe do you think Cross River State has been so far? Cross River State has been very safe. The safest state in the Nigeria, as I'm talking to you today, because the structure, the security structure is quite fine, robust, and the synergy is strong. And um, look at it statistically. Go to the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics. They tell you now. Maybe you go go to it now. The safest state is Kosovo State. And um, are you speaking as a member <laughs> of the cabinet of the governor, someone who's loyal to the governor, or are you speaking as a citizen of the state who truly? I'm talking as a. I'm talking as a citizen saddled of with the responsibility I'm a, I'm a, I'm of protecting the lives secretary. and property of the people I, in the state. I'm not. I'm a permanent secretary in charge of security. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking in, in, in German. Saying I'm, I'm supporting government. No. But you work for the government. Would you would you be speaking the, against the government if you were not necessarily working for the government? I can always. I've told you. I've told you. I am a permanent secretary. 
I, I will speak what is true. If, if that is right, that's what I stand in for. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you to you. James Ebo is a legal practitioner uh, in Cross River State. And, of course, uh, James Mboto is the special Permanent Secretary, Special Services, Governor's Office, Cross River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We have to go now. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a break. And when we come back, social political organizations express their disappointment with President Buhari's June 12th speech. We'll be right back after this break.